So the fire falls from heaven, it consumes everything, the bull, the wood, the stone, and the water, and it says this in verse 39, when all the people saw it, when, when all the people saw the fire, they fell face down on the ground and they cried out, the Lord, he is God, yes, the Lord, he is God. Now, what's interesting here is when we see this, we think, wow, what an amazing moment, and it truly was because they had, in this moment they are acknowledging God's holiness. But what I want you to see here is there is no real true repentance in this prayer. In other words, they were convinced, but they were not consumed. They, they, they eventually went back to their old ways and their old practices. They left the fire at the altar. If you're taking notes, write this down. Don't leave the fire at the altar. Don't leave the fire at the altar. In other words, don't come into an experience like this. Don't join us on, online and, 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 and experience the, the fire of God, the presence and the power of God, but then go back to your old ways or, and, and leave the fire here. Because God doesn't want to be a part of you, man. He wants to consume you. That's what Hebrews 12, 29 says this. Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is what? He's a consuming fire. He doesn't want part of you, and he wants all of you. Does he consume you? See, when his fire consumes you, you're like a mini temple, and it goes with you everywhere that you go, your workplace, your neighborhood, your campus, uh, everywhere that you are, there is the fire of God. It, it uh, determines your decisions. It, it, it affects your attitude. It, it, it shapes who you are. It, 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 it works in all of your interactions, how I interact with others. When I have the fire of God and it consumes me, it goes everywhere with me. Laura uh, got a text yesterday from someone, and uh, I just wanted to share it with you. As we all heard the news yesterday, everybody, some of you excited, some of you frustrated that uh, Joe Biden is president-elect Joe Biden. And throughout this series, I've just been trying to say the answer is not in the White House, it's in our house I love it that we have a democracy and we have elected officials, but the answer isn't in the White House. It's in our house. And she got this text and it said this, I just want to say that I, I really appreciate the staff, especially Brad, staying neutral through the election season. That's been intentional, by the way. It's been very disheartening the way some have been on social media, and I just want you to know that you're appreciated. Regardless of who's in the White House, God is in our house. And I hope the church wakes up to the fact that we should be the light guiding the lost to Jesus, not guiding people to a certain candidate. As followers of Jesus, we are called to be a holy people. We're called to be set apart to show the world a better way to live. Let's be torchbearers of his holiness.